Hey everyone, welcome to the new tutorial. Uh, this will be a bit of fun. I thought it was about time we do a tutorial on how to draw the chibi art style. If you're not quite sure what chibi is, uh, it's an art form that originated in Japan and it's really fun. It's got that really cute kind of personality to it. Usually the characters will have really big heads and small bodies, uh, but really cute features as well. And I find that this style is really fun if you want to just incorporate it into a certain character. Into like a really edgy character or something like that. That's what I like to do. And then you've got those two worlds that kind of clash. I think I've seen once before like the Predator in the chibi art style is really cool. <laughs> Have a look at any Funko Pop bobblehead and you'll see that chibi art style in there as well. It's really appealing, uh, it's just so fun and it really works well for these things, I think. And here's a few examples that I actually did uh, for Patreon when I launched the Patreon. I really wanted to have something for these banners that are going to be uh, promoting each tier on my Patreon. So when you scroll down you see you get to see exactly what you're going to get um, and it's just a nice way to display them. And I really wanted them to be iconic or like a badge, something that really resembles each tier. Like the collector is an orc. Um, you know, I really wanted to have that fantasy element in each character, as if they were like from Skyrim or something. And the wanderer is, you know, you're kind of just wandering in and you want to see what's going on and it's the first level. And then you want to dip your toes in a little bit more and you go the collector and you just want to like get a few things, collect, you know, collect all the art files and things like that. And the savior is pretty much spoken for it's it's uh you're you're the savior so you're like helping me out big time by going the 10 buck level and uh yeah it's everything for me so now i can't take full credit for these because uh these this style is actually derek lofman's style um i was heavily inspired by him he, he does so much brilliant chibi art so i was kind of just really inspired by what he does uh that gave me some direction into what to do here Make sure you check him out on Instagram if you want to have a look. Derek Lofman on Instagram. And his chibi style really shines. There's one of um, Magneto. And like a really cool Venom here. Love that Venom. And he's done a lot of official stuff for Marvel. So he actually does these for Marvel. But if you're ever looking for some good inspiration, he does really cool stuff with his chibi style. Also another one for reference is, is John Summeriva. Um, I'm not sure if I've pronounced that right, but really good artist at uh, the chibi art style as well. So have a look at this. This is a, a Boba, Boba Fett one. And you can just see here, like, have a look. Brilliant stuff. It's like really cartoony, really exaggerated stuff. You see this kind of style here? So that's the kind of stuff I'm going to try and dive into today. Keep in mind, I'm not an expert in the chibi art style. This is not my usual kind of realm. But I'm going to show you everything that I know about the chibi art style. And uh, it might help you move forward with that as well. So I just thought this would be a lot of fun. Um, really good to go along with the monthly project as well, which is also the chibi art style. So that might help you guys out a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. Now, one of the first things I want to explain is just understanding the height of a chibi character. And the style usually revolves around uh, two heads tall to up to three or even four heads tall. So the really cute characters are usually the ones that are about two heads tall. And they have that really fun style to them, kind of like the Funko Pop characters. A lot of chibi characters you'll see at about two and a half heads high. And I find that they're probably the cooler ones, you know. I really like those character proportions. Notice that some of the muscle anatomy starts to come in just a little bit. And then you'll sometimes have characters that are up to three heads tall. And that's when you're starting to get into a more refined character. You can see a lot more of their body, so you're going to see a lot more detail in the anatomy as well. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out. I, I think the smaller you go, the, uh, the less detail you have in the body. You can even just go straight lines for arms and legs. Uh, just keep them super simple and very cartoony. But as they get bigger, there's yeah definitely a lot more detail in those bodies. So yeah, when you're creating a character, it's really just about what you prefer and what kind of uh, proportions you would like to go with. But you can see if I put a character here that has normal proportions, uh, you can see the dramatic change in these characters. So those heads are massive and uh, yeah, very cartoony as well. And it can be really hard to break away from this style. If that's all you're used to, uh, it can be really hard to just flip it around. But um, I find that if I just draw a few of these and just keep going, um, you, you eventually get in the groove of things and, uh, and it will fall into place eventually. All right, so let's start drawing some proportions of a head. So literally just start with like a nice big sphere. 
And then at the bottom of that sphere, we're going to draw like a little swoop under like that that comes around and reaches up. Now draw some guides through the actual head, just slightly turned like that. Um, and I'll just draw a little contour around so I know where that's going. All right, I start erasing this little bottom part here if I want to. And then we'll do it ear, just like that. Um, so now you can kind of see the, the proportions I'm getting at here. I want that cute little um, cheek to kind of come up, back up about there and then we'll just have it merge with the head. So you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of just starting to form this head structure. And the trick is like, so the, the eye line, the, the bottom of the eyes will go no lower than that. And the top of the eyes, we're going to have them go probably no higher than that. So this is the halfway mark. Well, about that's that's probably the halfway mark of the actual sphere itself. Um, so we want the eyes to kind of stick within this, okay? And um, I don't want them to go outside of that. So let's just draw a couple of eyes in like that. And yeah, and this, this area down here will be for the mouth. So you can do a big mouth, or you can do like a little mouth like this, and just draw a little cute little nose that kind of pops in like that if you want to. Now, just don't hold back. So really slap it in and, and try and throw away everything you know about normal anatomy and just think of a really just cartoony character, really th bold, throw in some really bold eyelashes on top, um, keep it thin underneath. If it makes you feel better, throw in some really big uh, kind of pupils like that and then just put a couple of eyebrows in. So yeah, and, and I don't know, I might put a couple of little teeth in there. Um, shade in the mouth underneath the teeth a little bit um, just start sketching and mucking around like this and you might find that you'll really enjoy it and then I can start just putting in some random hair I don't even know what I would what I really want to do for the hair but um, you can do anything really just kind of create your own character or you can just do some fan art kind of stuff and then as you go you just start erasing away like Keep it really rough and you shouldn't have any problems if you just keep it really loose and rough. And again, I'll try and do another one. I'll just draw like a random circle and I want to drop down like a little bit of a cheek kind of bubble underneath like this. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just merge that back up and you see how I can kind of just merge that with the head and then just keep drawing that in uh, and then start. You can erase that back out now if you want to. And then, you know, those guides that I had for the eyes, sometimes once you get used to it, don't you don't really need to put those in. So you can just start assuming where the eyes will go um, and then you'll, you'll be all right. And I find that the quicker I go with these kind of outlines, these thick, bolder outlines, um, yeah, the more I'm happy with them. So I'm going to do a female character here uh, and I'll just give her some nice eyelashes. And I just need to kind of thin out that jaw there. I want to, you know, with female characters, it's good to kind of keep those jaws a lot smaller and more petite, I suppose, in a way. And a little bit more of a pointy chin as well. There we go. Now I'm just trying to think of those, those teeth uh, and the lips. Just want to keep them really small. Um, just enough room, really. And then we'll do those nice big, uh, big pupils. And I think that'll look really cool. And I always find just that little shine adds that little final touch kind of helps. This could actually be a uh, storm, I reckon. We'll do storm from X-Men. Give her that kind of mohawk look. Now I'll just give her some lightning earrings, I reckon. That should do it. There we go. So you can kind of see what I mean about the forehead. Uh, with, it just gives it that really cute look, almost baby-like in a way, like that baby cuteness. So babies usually have that massive kind of head and then they'll have that those cute little proportions down the just like the lower half of their face and then again what if we did a crazy angle so get a bit of a sphere going for a head and then try something drastic go absolutely ballistic with the cartooniness so get get like a really big scream in there fill up that face with the whole mouth even like just go absolutely bonkers really throw in those lines and then we'll get some teeth going and I'll do some crazy teeth like like this whether they're going to be really cartoony kind of versions of them make sure we get that curl in the teeth so it wraps around the head um, just like that there we go uh, a bit of a tongue maybe the tongue can be like just crazy um, fill that in 
Um, but basically, yeah, just, just want to explain just to not hold back. We'll just make sure that the, you could even have a little bump in the chin if you want to, just to add a little bit of humor to it, something funny. And then we could just have, uh, you know, the eyes could be up like this. And then wherever that nose will go. And then we'll put the ears really low because um, the head's going to be like raised up. So let's do it like that. Get some eyebrow action in there. So like some absolutely crazy eyebrows like that. And then if I was going to put a little body in there, I want to get like a really cute little body um, and just have it like really small. And I've got an idea of who I might make this be. <laughs> just a rough idea. I might turn it into Wolverine like a little chibi wolverine I think that'd be fun you see how uh, with the arms I'm barely adding any detail because I want to kind of keep him just trying to figure out what kind of body I'm gonna have on him uh, and then obviously I'll have to have some kind of crazy hair maybe we'll do the classic wolverine for this I'll just move him over here in the middle a bit more um, I feel like that head needs to be just yeah kind of like moved or something now I can have like the classic nose, you know, that pointy nose. So I won't worry about that that little bit there. It'll be something like that. And I don't think he actually has ears in that mask. So I'm going to have to fix that up. There we go. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Um, I'll probably tidy this up sometime soon. And I want like cute little claws. I don't want to have like the, I don't want them to be like massive. I'm going to do, I'm, I'm sticking with the cuteness. Just before I clean up this Wolverine sketch, I really want to highlight again just how when you're drawing a character to have that sphere and then, you know, everything, you see how the eyes, they're, they're right down the bottom. And even with the jaw that comes off the bottom there. So just really remember that and then you'll be okay. So make sure you leave all this room up here um, and that'll give it that really cute kind of look, uh, that chibi style. Now I'll just fade back this sketch a little bit. I want to I want to clean this one up. I'm just having a little bit too much fun with him. I want to clean it up. So I'm going to start to put a little bit of muffle, muscle definition into it. Just a cartoony version. Uh, like keep it really cartoony. There we go. That'll do. Um, got a little bit of stubble there. Uh, but I just realized it's not really going to work with the eyes because these eyes are black. Uh, the, the mask is black. I'll, I'll probably put some eyes in there soon. Um, just for something fun. Top that off later. But yeah, one thing I want to point out with this one is have a look at the size of his head. I'll just see if I can shape that. And if I duplicate that, you can see the entire body is just another head. So it's two heads tall, this one. So that's kind of like that extra cute kind of version of Wolverine there. I just like the clash between, you know, cuteness and ferocious, like this edgy character, Wolverine, who's, yeah, brutal. And then you've got in this cute style. I just think it, it's really fun. And yeah, I just want to highlight also just how sometimes you can have the mouth really quite small if you want, or you can go extra large. Like, it doesn't matter. Just don't hold back. That's the key to this is to really uh exaggerate just go absolutely bonkers um try not to stick to those realistic proportions because then it'll come across a little bit too stiff um so these characters are all about having fun so it's all about craziness just fun silliness be, be silly and go absolutely bonkers with it so i stretched his mouth wide out and just went absolutely bonkers so yeah i'm having too much fun with these uh let's let's try and do storm now so I'm just going to grab her, um, I'll hide that other guy, where is he? And I'll just put her over here and we'll see if we can do a uh, version of her. So when doing female proportions, now again, remember I'm going to try and go, um, I might even try and go two and a half heads with her, I'll just see. The proportions are quite different, so if I was going to do a female, I usually do um, this kind of shape, like a pear shape. So you do like a pear shape body, um, usually kind of like that and that's kind of how I would do it uh, and then you'd have the arms come out of out of there uh, but I would have the the legs go down you want them to go quite small um, but you'd have the legs go down a bit more like that there you go I just wanted to tidy that up a little bit so you could see um, and I'd probably have a her, her other foot like that and then a really tiny little foot down the bottom see when I'm doing characters like this, I like to have, so they kind of get smaller and smaller as they go down. 
Uh, so when you get to the feet, the feet are tiny. They're like that small. I want to have them like, like pretty small. And, um, but as you get up, you know, the arms could be a little longer proportionate to the legs. So, so they're not usually, they don't match. So the legs aren't usually matching the arms. The arms can be longer. Um, you know, kind of like that. You see how that kind of works there. So and I'd probably, um, put a bit of motion in that. I reckon I don't like where it was. Yeah, it'd probably move her across a bit more like that. Um, but yeah, I think I kind of want to do a different body. I kind of want to change it. Just adds a little bit more motion in it. And uh, yeah, so now I'll just do the tidying up and stuff. I'm just trying to work out whether that head needs to come off the body just a little bit more. I feel like it was just a little low. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, yeah, cool. Just a little bit more dynamic than the other one. Um, I like using a bit of foreshortening. So she's kind of coming at us now. I could have some lightning bolts around, things like that. Might even finish all of these eventually. I just put a little bit of contouring around just so you can see the angles of things. So, um, so her body is definitely going at a downward angle like that. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little ghost rider. Uh, I really want to do one of those. And you can see right here as I'm starting uh, that I really use that bottom half of the head, like I said, and the top half is like full just circle. So really make sure you keep those faces really low and then you'll get that cute look. Um, and you can see here, I'm also going for that kind of body that is only about two heads tall. Uh, maybe a little bit taller than that even. Uh, but yeah, I just want to have a bit of fun with it and put a little bit of energy into it. So I've really got him kind of swinging those arms back. I'm going to put some chains in there. And I really wanted to do Ghost Rider again because... He's just one of those kind of edgy characters, like a darker and gritty kind of vibe. And I really like that that works with the cute thing as well. Like it's just kind of funny, but yeah, this is quite rough right now. But, um, but yeah, you can see there's a little bit of anatomy in there. I'm putting some shoulders and a little bit of forearm detail, but overall it's still very simplified and just straight arms and straight legs. And I'm also going to try and do a Wolverine, but this one's going to be like the Hugh Jackman version. I want to do like a realistic, like just with hair. I want to show you how you can use hair and all that kind of stuff. So again, I'm going for a really exaggerated kind of expression. Uh, definitely getting that fierceness out of him that Wolverine has. Uh, and you know, that exaggerated mouth. So the mouth is kind of almost bigger than the whole face itself. And it's just part of that cartoony kind of vibe. Uh, now with the body, I'm going to have him kind of leaping towards us a little bit more uh, and lunging towards throwing one of those claws towards us, you know what I mean? Like really pointing them towards us, a bit of foreshortening. So that's a bit of fun. Um, and you'll notice how I really want to have those little stumpy little arms, really small stuff. So I'm not going for realistic proportions here. And I am adding a little bit of detail. So this guy is kind of like uh, two and a half to heads tall, maybe three even. So... I want to make sure that he's got a bit of that. Uh, and then I'm just cleaning it up. I'm going through doing some outlines now. Uh, just want to tidy it up. And I'll probably finish this one as well and make sure he's complete. And when you're tidying up a character, really try and get those inks quite bold, you know, but put some volume into them. You know, think of that cartoony vibe. So really just thicken up some parts, but thin out others, almost pencil thin and then really bold out some other versions. And, it, and you'll get a really cool kind of balance between those outlines, and that's what you want. You want it to feel almost animated in a way. All right, so here's my Wolverine so far. He's finished, I'll just hide those sketch lines. I'm gonna do some flat colors. I'll, I'll show you how I might color one of these characters. Very simple, really. So on my main outlines layer, I'll go in this white area and get my magic wand. I'll click once and hold shift, click again, just to really hug that selection in. So that's now selected everything on this outside. So I need to invert that so it grabs my character. So control shift I, that's invert. Uh, and so now I have a nice selection of just my character. Uh, this is for the flat colors, by the way. So select, shrink that selection by one pixel. And that's just going to pull it in under these outlines just a bit more so I don't see any color on the outside. All right, um, I found a few of these uh, little shots here and I just want to sample that skin color there. Now this is like, this is the Fortnite Wolverine Logan. Uh, so I'm going to fill that. There we go. That's our first fill flat color. Uh, that works really nicely. I'm just going to make sure none of that 
Uh, those colours have gone and snuck on the outside, but they're all good. Looks good to me. And yeah, the rest will be nice and easy. So I'm just going to make a new layer for everything. Like the hair will be on its own layer, uh, the jeans and the shirt. Uh, so yeah, and just use my paint bucket in Clip Studio to do this. And it, I just find the paint bucket is perfect. It just, it, it really, the, the one in Clip Studio actually goes underneath these outlines. So if I hide these outlines, you can see that that fill goes, it bleeds underneath that outline. So it doesn't just hit the edge, it just tucks under it, which is beautiful. The reason that I chose this Fortnite one to uh, sample, I just found the colors were a little bit more vibrant to match this cartoony vibe. So um, I just like the colors. And you know, if you say, sometimes if you sample from colors from a movie snapshot, they'll be really desaturated. Um, it might not seem that way, but once you put it on your character, these colors might be way different. So I just like to make sure I, um, yeah, get it right. And you know what? I kind of really like those colors in the back of that Wolverine. So I'm going to do like a little backdrop really quick. Uh, I'll fill it in with that, get the, uh, the gradient tool and we'll just do the kind of a similar vibe there um, and I'll use that and we'll just place it behind Wolverine here somewhere whether it's like perfectly uh, maybe like that for now and we might even do those kind of similar little streaks I like that so I'll do something like that I could even um, I could even get this and chip away some of this background um, maybe like from the other side or something to make it look like it's been ripped away we might do something like that but i'll i'll get to that eventually um yeah so mostly there with this guy just gonna lighten that skin tone um and what i want to do is make a new layer above the skin tone and which will be the shading uh and then what i want to do is get you sample it make sure you've got that same skin tone but make it just a little bit darker not too dark but I'll actually want to, I want to bring it into the reds more. You see over here? So we're steering away from the, the orangey skin tones, but more into the red. So when I get into any shading of this character, I just want to change that hue just a little bit because I'll show you what's going to happen. So now when I start shading, um, it's going to be just a slightly different tone, which I think looks quite nice. Um, I might start with my usual method of soft shading first. So I'm getting a soft brush, quick brush over of that in places that I think need to be darker, like under the fist uh, and under that fist, and especially under the eyes. So around under the eyes and the nose. Okay, then I'll get my sharp uh, shading and start doing that. So let's, let's just start brushing that in. And the shading process is, uh, is quite simple really. I only do one level of shading on this, just keeping it nice and simple. I don't want to overload this with detail. So I'm going through just thinking about that light source, where, where the light source is coming from, which is kind of directional above him, and uh, just putting that one little level of cell shading in. And I'll continue that right through the character, um, through the hair, making sure that I have some nice flow and streaks through there, kind of thinking about, you know, those chunks of hair, each single layer of, uh, of hair that might fold over each other. I'm trying to think of things like that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's kind of coming across nice and simple. And then, yeah, I'll just do the rest all the same, very similar, just thinking about that light source. And I usually do the lighting, which is a very similar technique to this, but it's just light. It's a lighter color and I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to get a nice soft brush towards the end and uh, just use the dodge tool um, and that will just keep everything extra simple, the rendering. So now what I'm going to do with him is just a nice little final touch of a rim light around the side of the character. So it's going to be going all the way around him. So I'll do that with a new layer just underneath the outlines layer and I'll have a nice yellow tone similar to that backdrop that kind of color and I'm going to use that all the way around as a rim light but the blending mode on that layer will be set to screen and now I'm just going through thinking of a light source that might be on the left there 
and then a little bit on the on the right as well. All right. So the next thing I want to do is just grab uh, the fill, the base fill layer, the outlines. I'm going to merge them together underneath everything, and then I'm going to take them down to a solid black. So it's just on its own layer. So that's just like a cutout. And then I'm going to go over here to fill, take it down to zero percent, and then double click on that fill that I just made and put a stroke on it. And what I'm trying to do is just put an outline stroke around this character, but not black. But we need to change that color to like a white or like something like that. Size it up a little bit more. There we go. And that's going to really make this character pop a bit more. Give it that nice comic kind of style. Uh, I might even make it like a yellow, I think. So I'm going to give it like a yellow kind of color. Set it to screen and that should help it blend a bit better with that white. And now what I want to do as a final touch is just to colorize these outlines. So I'm going to select certain areas of these outlines and they're going to match like the skin tone. So I'm selecting these black lines around the skin. And then we're going to colorize it to match that skin color. And then I'll put a bit of saturation on it. Press OK. There we go. So that's looking a lot better. And I'm going to do the same now with uh, some of these other areas. So we'll try it with the claws now. So I really want to colorize these claws so it's just not, not a stark black. So I'm just going to lighten them a fair bit so it looks like a kind of a, a lightened metal. It just gives it that nice overall soft look. Um, a bit more like kind of playing up on that cuteness of the chibi style. So yeah, I'm going to keep colorizing these outlines and until we get a finished product. There we go. I'm going to call that one complete. So there's a uh, yeah Wolverine all done. So um, that's that's the chibi style in that one and how you can colorize it. So going through the colors and the inks and everything in that style. So hopefully seeing that entire process can help uh, in some way. I might clean up a few more of those characters and uh, yeah, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, well, I've just finished up Ghost Rider here. Um, I inked him, did all the inks and the colors, just some simple flat colors. Uh, and a nice simple backdrop as well. So it's literally just a brush stroke um, with a nice light blue color. And it was just one of these nice kind of grunge brushes. It's not even that grungy. Um, it's more like, a, you see how it's just got a couple of rough edges on it. And that's the kind of thing I did. And I just did a few swoops like that behind him. Um, but yeah, that's all done now. There's the Ghost Rider. And I used all the same techniques that we just went through with Wolverine over here. He's probably the cleanest. Um, I spent more time on him. Uh, the Ghost Rider is not too bad, but it, I did kind of rush it a little bit. You can kind of tell. These chains are literally just a brush. Um, I've got this chain brush. And I used that nice and big. And then I just kind of um, flattened it and, well, I just did some outlines over it to uh to kind of make it look like it was yeah but that's that's a rush job and i don't usually do it that way um i just wanted that effect i haven't got much time that is all um but yeah usually i would i would just draw them out uh link by link and um do it properly because you'll get a much better effect but um <clears throat> but yeah that's that's uh all done now and even our little wolverine over here um i didn't intend on doing two wolverines i just <laughs> I don't know, I just kind of gravitated towards that and went with the flow, so um, I've got a classic suit Wolverine and a Logan uh, from the movies Wolverine, you know, Hugh Jackman, so I don't know, <laughs> it's just something fun. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it, I, this one was a lot of fun too. Um, I really enjoy doing this, I just find that mixing it up with some chibi art can really like boost uh, or, or just make you feel good because it's fun, it's just genuinely enjoyable to do. Um, so that can be really good as an artist. It's almost like therapy in a way and it can just you got to let that side of you out sometimes and I feel like that's what chibi art can do for you. So I highly recommend trying it out. Um, pick a character, just something fun, an edgy character or you can do a fun one, anything you want, something from video games, do some fan art and try and see what you can come up with this, with this kind of style and you'll be surprised. I bet you'll have an absolute blast. And I've also got that storm there, but I um, haven't finished her, but I might might finish her up later. Um, yeah, anyway, well, that'll do for this tutorial. I hope I covered enough. Um, 
you know, proportion wise, I feel like we went through a fair bit of that, the head proportions to the body. Uh, and hopefully, you know, seeing the way I do this style might help in some way. I don't know. Uh, but we went through that entire process as well of inking and coloring. So I feel like we've covered pretty much everything to do with, well, what I know about Chibi. Like I said at the start, I'm, I'm not an expert in this, but I, I can show you whatever I know. So um, it's a really fun style. All right. Well, let's leave it there. And I hope you have fun with the monthly project. Anyone who's who's taking part in this month's monthly project, have fun with it. Um, I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just really enjoyable to see. Um, and I love checking out Discord and seeing all your chibi art on there as well. Okay, see you later, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>